Him, but Graves would have been a, another big thing, just offering more burst. Yeah. Well, just look at IG's comp for a sec. Is I got five seconds left to lock in these picks, would certainly all work together. Kid does lock in the Civil. Ludo's going to come in there as well. And oh. oh my god, he goes straight to Darius. Okay. Hey, 516, it's nice to see you. <laughs> There's literally no hesitation from Mako. <laughs> You know, Amazing J uh, goes to Darius. There was a few things we had considered for this patch. Darius was one that we considered and said, you know what, it's not actually that great. Yep. Because it hasn't been hot fixed yet. Turns out it's good enough to pick. With no <laughs> hesitation. And Pawn's got the game playing mid. It's been a while since we've seen EDG really innovate in a game. This is a very different <laughs> style of team for them. So if they can make this work, I'll be very impressed. I still prefer Invictus Gaming's drafting uh, for this, especially that Lulu takeaway, just because, again, I look at EDG's comp. You have so much dive, you have so much back threat, but poor little Deft on this Kogma has very little resources and very few tools to keep him alive. Well, I think try and win hard and win early might be the plan for EDG. We've seen the aggression on display already today. It was great to see EDG back to their tower diving selves. Could see some of that here again. I don't even know how to start with this team comp. Gangplank, <laughs> Darius. And Porter's teleport, by the way, from my last check-in. It's a check double in. TP. You call it a scattered run at them and also not run at them comp. It is the epitome of confusion. Like, look at this top lane. Welcome to the future. Yep, Fiora Darius. Welcome to 516 in Cow Back on Gragas. Clearly back on Elise. Sorry, Cal played in Italy last game. So yes, he did. did have Gragas games, but... Still strong junglers for both. As rookies actually on Lulu duty up against the legendary Pawn Gangplank. We haven't seen it in action just yet. We'll have to see how it goes. I better be blown away, Pawn. I agree. <laughs> the quote was Pawn is OP on this patch. Yep, because of Gangplank. Yep. We go back through Siva and Braun for IG and Leona and Cogmore for EDG. And I feel like 516 took a little while to get here tonight, but it's finally arrived in all its glory in this next game. Still, the wild card champion Cogmore. If Def goes off, then it's going to be perfectly fine. But if he doesn't, to be fair, Def was playing beautifully last game. You know, yeah, he was. even though he had resources, just on his own, dodging all of those skill shots. So you know, maybe, maybe there's trust there. Well, let's sure. see how much trust there is. Let's get straight into this next game. And here we are, as Amazing J has gone deep into the champ pool Dunk once Master. more. Dunk Master Darius. And if with standard lanes in particular, it's going to be a very enjoyable start to this game. Pawns mid gangplank. Amazing J out on that Darius. And IG up a game here. EDG going to try and even things up with a very creative team comp. That's yeah. one way to put it. <laughs> so just to clear things up one more time as well, this is pre-hot fix Darius. So the Q damage at level 1 is 20 instead of 40, and the heal amount is 10% less. So this is, in a way, it's pre-buff Darius. So keep that in mind. He's not actually considered that strong by a lot of people. Well, see if Amazing J can make it work. Mako instantly picked it for him. So clearly had the counter pick prepared. That might have been why they didn't want to take away the Fiora. Didn't feel the need to. And Amazing J's at least got the emote spam down. Man, if there's anything you can count on from Amazing J, it's BM. Well, it's his own teammates right now. He's having a bit of fun. Having maybe too much fun, in fact. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. <laughs> EDG going to line up for these first bits of jungle. Mako and Deft over on the Grump, which means Clev and Amazing J will start on the blue. Going to see standard lanes, however, from both teams. So it's going to be Leona Kogma versus Sivir Brom. You know, yeah. it's your standard lanes. You have to admit it is actually standard across the board here from Invictus Gaming. Having Lulu on Rookie in particular, yeah. it's where they actually find most of their success, even in the regular split, they had a big, big problem with winning games at all. And then they discovered Lulu in vain and they won everything from there. So good to see them back on what works for them so effectively. Oh, you can see Pawn though with that almost trademark Crystalline Flask at this point up against the Lulu. He's going to suffer some poke early, but... Getting that farm out with the parlay. And again, from all the reports we've heard, Pirate Pawn is pretty good. I just want to touch quickly on Invictus Gaming's competition again as uh, Mako deciding to go ham. Yeah, going aggressive actually is Mako. Gonna eat the passive there from Kitty's level two. All in from EDG does give them some nice damage. 
And uh, the thing that I wanted to point out is just how empowered Fiora is by this composition. So the one thing that Fiora doesn't really have is a lot of uh, big gap closers. Of course, she has her little dash forward with her Q, but naturally it's about positioning with Fiora. You know, being able to get in front of the enemy when you proc your ultimate so you're able to hit all of their faces. And a Sivir ultimate and a Lulu Whimsy are going to shore up all of those problems. I'm ready for Zatai to go massive. Like we said, Kakao and Rookie, those are the, the spine of Invictus Gaming. You point at this team and say, those are the carries. But Zatai is the guy the guy who's continuously showing up big. And certainly in these last few games, when he's been playing more carries, when top laners have gone towards more of these Juggernaut or even just straight up carry style champions, I agree. Zatai, much better in this sort of metagame. And that's showing right now as Kid defaults to a bit more of a utility style carry, although. Things will calm back down, <laughs> as we have had another early back from Rookie actually going for, again, some aggressive Dorans, but Pawn's going to go yeah. back this time as well. And so this is like what Spawn was mentioning, how Assassins want to go back so that they have kill pressure, but instead Rookie is going back for a lane presence, because up against this Gangplank, who has the innate sustained advantage from the typical Flask, and then having the remove Scurvy as well for extra heal, there's no way to push a Gangplank out of lane. So if you're matching trades, and especially when you have blends against the teleport lane, it's unfavorable for you to maintain your laning presence because Gangplank will start to push ahead. So he recalls early, gets that second Doran's award and just a lot of pots to try and match his strength. Yeah, Pawn actually just went back and got a long sword and I think a return to the flask and maybe a couple of extra potions in the pink ward. So lots of consumables early on here for these two. Yeah. What just happened in the last two minutes as we see Kakao rushing top is pretty much the epitome of the difference between these junglers. Hold on. That's the game. Yeah, getting top there, actually, from Kakao getting quite aggressive there. I think Amazing Jay, he's already flashed. But he'll be okay. Maybe not, actually. <laughs> Having some problems <laughs> there on the top lane. There's Pawn putting in. Kakao's actually going to die. Amazing Jay pulls that off, and Pawn was <laughs> not needed. Use your imagination. Use your I, look, imagination. I tried to reconstruct it for you based on the available information, okay? No, but what was beautiful about that uh, fantastic play, obviously, from Amazing Jay and Pawn on the TP, even though Pawn didn't get anything, just there for moral support like our observer. But the fact that Clear Love backs in the river to shadow underneath how far forward Amazing J is, but then you see Kakao. So that's that's standard clear love. You know, I'm, I'm shadowing underneath my lanes. I'm providing flanking pressure for them, and I'm just creating a safety net. Kakao, his creative pathing on a very mobile champion like Gragas, yeah. gets behind the ward line and looks to make the early gank. And that's literally Kakao versus clear love in a nutshell. Yeah, and clear love pokes in there, but doesn't quite find it. I just want to quick story, real uh, quickly. Oh, I'm the so ready. The first event I ever casted. Well, before we had spectator mode, so I had to restream someone else's stream. So I casted the entire game from a support player's perspective. Oh. Those mini maps play by plays were top notch. So thank you. That brought me back there with that last one. <laughs> That's all. That was great. You created a great visual from the lack Excellent. there of knowledge, but t take stock of what actually happened. Is Amazing Jay has blue buff. Yep. First and foremost, he has got a blue buff as Darius, who is a champion Ooh. with a ridiculous amount of sustain because he heals every time that Q oh, connects wait, with the champion. He's got level 6 now as well as a time. Might have to be careful, clear of lining up for that he's dive as well. He's yeah. in his head. The tie's yeah. only 5, no flash <laughs> here. Ulti's out, they're going to get straight in for an Amazing J, who will get jumped on, clear trying to line it up, Repost will not be quite there, and the dunk is good! Amazing J with the kill. Now the thing that I want to point out is Gangplank is being used very similar to how Pawn would use Twisted Fate. Using his ultimate to impact the rest of the map, you had the, uh, the Gangplank ultimate to leave that off. The other thing, as clear Love comes out of the brush, making sure that he's in human form, so he can leave, lead with the CC, but he's already been in human form long enough that he's able to quickly get back into spider form, so he's prepped his repel to drop tower aggro. You know, the best part about that entire thing is Amazing Jay walked at Zatai, just walked at him. Didn't use a single spell and forced things out of Zatai as he got a little bit high fear and needed to do something to live. Once the spell was forced, it was the easiest kill in their, in their life. Yep, Riposta was gone and good clean up there in the top lane as EDG this time. Amazing Jay, you started game 102. Gonna start this game 2-0. Looking a lot better now for the Darius player as he's got his fade. Tiamat is on the way for Zatai. As Pawn has a long sword. Deft actually has two. So it might be Bilge Water early. Maybe wants a bit more sustain. Deft also has his little Pumas. He's got his Nikes. Laced up, ready to go. Berserker Greaves completed there. 
As a Phoenix Codex is up for Rookie, so the early itemization. Sheen there for Pawn as well. And the jungler is going for item. And then Sight's number four in chance. So pretty standard here. EDG got themselves about six, seven hundred gold lead, so nothing massive. Yeah, most of that is going to come down to the Darius also. So. Amazing J is going to have to impact the entire map, not just his own lane. And at this stage, he's actually well and truly in control to the point where he can almost freeze if he wants to. Uh, now this is going in onto the tie. Him, like, Damage works. is good. He's got his flash. He's got no ult. It's almost there. Gets the Q. Great repost from Zatai. I think that actually kept him alive. But here comes Rookie. Yep, the reinforcements are arriving. Amazing J will spot them. Pawn's ultimate is almost back available, not quite yet. And Spawn's probably kicking himself right now that he's not on this cast. He is such a big fan of Fiora into Gangplank as a matchup, just because anytime Darius looks for the swing of his axe, obviously it does more damage if you're able to hit them with the tip of it. You should Q forward as Fiora and deny a lot of the damage as well as trade. Yep, I mean, Fiora in general, very solid top lane pick. We've seen a number of players in the LPL have recent success with it as Pawn. It's a lot of harass there from Rookie. Still drinking that bottle, making sure he keeps healthy. He needs to scale a bit more. Protect Trinity Force first, which is kind of the obvious choice there. Basketball Before. distracts me. It really does. It's amazing, Jay. No CS lead, but he's keeping the lane. It's a tie off as many creeps as he can. But it's a lot of pressure again from Invictus Gaming. Kakao has been posturing. Pestering, posturing, same thing. Yep. Around that top side of the map, trying to put pressure down onto Amazing J. Of course, he's a 2-0 Darius, and we saw the amount of pressure he can place in the 1v1 scenario, forcing Fiora essentially out of lane before Lulu arrived, before Kakao arrived on this Gragas also. So the pressure's there, and it's keeping it sort of even, but it's definitely favoring the Darius. Oh, good hit there from Mako. Dev comes in, gets good damage down, weaves in another ult there as well. And even with the double longswords versus BF, Deft with a slight level lead and Mako ready to go. Nice harass coming out, winning the bottom lane so far for EDG. Power dynamic has shifted now that Kogma has his ultimate. Typically how things tend to go. Really unfair, but several will be fine to just perform some creeps. Even BF sword against double longsword though and the power has still shifted. So mm -hmm. all things considered, Deft and Mako are playing this lane really well. And I think it's all the attention Kakao's bringing top as well. Doesn't have to worry as much about a gank. But top lane's certainly a hot piece of activity right now. Clearlove does get spotted by a ward. Pawn is ready with that ultimate, but they'll back away as there were three or three people top. Possibly, no, not quite four. He just walked right over that pink ward. Okay, we'll see it. Place deep vision before you kill the pink ward. Yep. Uh, nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, well, uh, uh, Clear love. Make your mind up. So the Playing idea is, is that you place your deep vision so that when you take the time to hit that pink ward five times, see that you can see them coming. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Thank God. Pops the W, hits the water. It's okay, worried. guys. He's a professional. He's playing with my heart. It certainly was. It's EDG. Looking to try and get themselves further ahead in this game. Almost 2,000 gold ahead just on those kills and the farm alone. So doing nicely there, although I imagine Pawn is inflating some of that with Parlay. EDG continuing to gain strength again. It's so weird to see, but it's almost like they're back to early 2015 form. Just strong laners doing their thing as Clearlove makes sure nothing bad happens. Yep, winning their lanes through uh, just shadowing and playing to strong sides. So anytime Deft and Mako are pushed forward, Clearlove is on the bottom side of the map. Anytime Amazing J is pushed forward, Clearlove is sitting in a bush backing underneath Amazing J, not necessarily having to create pressure and looking for a gank, but just making sure he's there if anything does go wrong. Yeah, it's more about presence than pressure. Because he needs to be there in case something does happen. But for the most part, if he can just sit back and farm, let his lanes win. It doesn't matter too much as a leaf. You're always going to do damage. You do percentage damage. So you're always going to be happy. Pawn actually teleporting back to the mid lane now as well. Did go back, but Rookie pushed in the next wave, so Pawn teleports down to make sure he grabs it. Bit of a scuffle in the bottom lane as well. Leaves Kid with about 40% health as Kitty's going to try and give some of that back. And again, it's just the double longsword Berserker Grooves here for Death. But the 2v2 is looking good for EDG, and they're getting stronger. These items are starting to come out. Cinder Hulk completed for clear love. The Trinity Force on the way for Pawn as he goes back and gets almost all of it, just missing the zeal and the item itself. Things are starting to heat up. Haven't seen a dragon just yet, and EDG still have that lead. Ah, the classic walk. Everyone game. is 
Phil like hasn't realized that you need to have two to chain it with a third because <laughs> it doesn't actually chain when there's one. I'm just trying to chain one and two there. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah. It doesn't work. No, we've seen a lot of... I'm happy to be proven missed wrong. Missed barrel micro. Yeah. It's warm up section. certainly is. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to slap away these creeps now as well. <laughs> Still warming up on the gangplank, like you mentioned. Is Dragon's actually going to be started by Invictus Gaming. Amazing Jays pushing down the top tower. Clear Love has spotted the tie, but that's an easy clean dragon for IG. And they take this window of opportunity simply because you had a missed time back between Deft and Nico. Oh, actually eating damage here from Clear Love. Look yeah. that Cinder Hulk, pretty tanky, able to dish out good base damage. And Amazing J continues rocking down the top side. The guy's going to have to go back again. So it was a missed time back, but it was also a very predictable and forced back as they overstayed their welcome with two yep. long swords for such a long time that the second they recalled Invictus Gaming, looked to just pull the trigger pretty much immediately. Yeah, okay. So what I'm pointing at is uh, the Blade of the Room King. Uh, first itemization coming out of depth, and this makes perfect sense. Again, so this Kogma has pretty much zero resources and tools to keep himself safe. This is very Name esque. When Name has to take care of himself, he builds a Blade of the Rune King to offer him so much more kite potential. So, yeah, it'll help his shred a bit against something like Gragas, but you're not facing a ton of tanks against Invictus Gaming. This itemization is purely to keep death safe. We'll probably still see Trinity Force as well, but just oh, yeah, changing, it'll come up, out. changing up the order. Yeah, so if you get it as the first item, you have the immediate use of the Blade of the Ruin King. And everyone else does less relative damage as well, whereas the Phage from the Trinity Force gives you some nice kite. The rest of it's just combat. And Mako now caught out. Ulti hits both as Mako has to flash out. Kid with a great spell shield is going to keep himself alive. Death going to come in as Amazing Jay's down here as well. And nobody dead out of all of that well played by both. I'm not sure how Mako's actually still alive. Mako was really close to dying, but the second he turned it around, the ultimate and the Eve blocked hey, by a shield. single spell shield. A big factor is that he probably would have died for it, but they would have got a kill also. They would have, but no dice there to start things off. Amazing J burns that teleport as well, has to walk back to the top lane to stop the tie. Take a couple tower hits there, but it'll shove the wave in nice and aggressively. Item still coming out for Amazing Jake. Could be Black Cleaver first, does have a giant spell to offset. Dead man's play. Yeah, dead man's play. We still on the Olaf. Could be a very similar build here for the Darius. He almost missed that cannon, but manages to get it. Going to clear these out from under the turret. Hey, he's a professional. He certainly is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's what we define as a professional player, Oscar, and he's better than we are. Yet we can still say things like, one game like is missing Cakes. Well, it's all right. Ah. Cakes will be on for the team. Fights has the blue buff now, as well as Rookie. Actually done a, a nice job getting aggressive on that turret. Might be knocking it down soon. It'll open up nice space and a bit of extra gold there for Invictus Gaming. But once more, it's been quiet between these major buff spawns. More importantly, it'll unlock Rookie to start roaming around with Kakao. Or maybe Kakao rooms himself. As he's going to clear out this pink ward, Rookie is going to get a crest on. The damage is coming down. He'll get the tower, but Pawn going to try and chase. Just doesn't quite have it. Safety ultimate there from Rookie. Had no real vision of where the jungler was going to be from EDG. So use the ultimate. Secures the tower. And now he is unlocked, but he doesn't have the ultimate to use to help the rest of his team just yet. Of course, super low cooldown. Still got his whimsy. Here yeah, we that's go. Right. Clear love trying to hang out here in the mid lane. Look through at a pink ward that he's on top of his dragon. Not up just yet here. IG took it relatively recently. I think it's about two and a half minutes from this point. His pawn, he'll go back. Probably get himself that Trinity Force on the Dead Man's Plates completed for Amazing J, along with that Blade of the Ruin King for Death. So first items pretty much across the board starting to be completed now. Yeah, so we discussed this earlier. The Dead Man's Plate is not a great first immediate item, but you want to get something with that to augment its strength as an item because it is very strong. But if you don't have something like the Phage to give it extra power, a reason to actually have the Dead Man's Plate, then it's kind of wasted stats and won't get used effectively. Because so they're multiplicative stats. Yeah. Yes. So smart itemization here from Amazing J to ensure he has a fade before he goes for the Dead Man's Plate, opposed to having to finish full items or just rushing it. Well, there's the Pawn Trinity Force as well. So starting to power up here as EDG might be having eyes towards that next Dragon Fight. It is up at a minute 45. IG did take the first one. EDG would not be unhappy to equalize. But the gold lead shrunk a bit. EDG is still floating at around 1,500 gold up. 
Adept, a little bit stronger right now. You can see those Ws doing a lot of hurt. We'll try and take this tower out. Yeah, very strong Deft. He's been playing this lane exceptionally well. Mako and Kitties are kind of just there as accessories for their AD carries at the moment. So you look at the relative one versus one battle, the range that Death has on this Pokemon is definitely reigning supreme against this lane. And the CS discrepancy, 142 to 179. You see Mako right there using his Zenith Blade through the creeps to proc his Sunlight, so he's able to clear out the wave easier. And again, EDD just shadowing underneath Death to Mako's pressure. And now looking for a dive, I think. You can see Gangplank and Elise moving down there. They're actually hiding in a brush, hoping to force something out, but... The bottom lane of IG is going to back. They know Dragon's up soon. They have to get their backs in time. Infinity Edge now completed for Siva. Kid's got the Avarice Blade ticking away as well. And EDG will push out one last wave. They'll get the tower by the looks of things, but they will not get the kills they wanted. And Dragon still a little while away. 30 seconds now. The big question always came down to what are both of these teams waiting for? And EDG, they're a sudden love to prolong their laning phase. And by doing so, they are inadvertently winning their laning phase through lane strength. Clearlove hasn't had to really do anything at all. He can let those laners win. Horn being cute. Yep, trying to snipe Rookie there, but doesn't quite connect on the AoE. Just a little out of range there. Dragon up in five seconds. Horn is going to clear these waves out. He's quite strong again if they can line up the right damage. Oh Depth goes back. Goes for a zeal, actually. So might be actually still going towards Trinity Force with that purchase, potentially. But... Really changing up the early styles. You mentioned Name's name earlier, Frosker, and this build certainly reminding me of that player. Yep. This is pretty much the Name special coming out of Kogma. Lots of attack speed. I mean, it's just earlier power, right? Yeah. It's just earlier power. Mid-game power early spike game. and uh, safety. Yeah. And I think for the most part, as Frosker mentioned, the safety aspect. It is mid-game power. has that extra crit immediately. But move speed yep. from the zip, which will help a lot. And the Blade of the Ruin King active. See Kegs being set up now as well by Pawn. Like that aspect, a lot of Gangplank, protecting those little areas so that you can chain them off together and do good damage. Now EDG going to start this Dragon. They know they're strong. Zatai can teleport his way in, but EDG going to brute force this one down. Every aspect is just rumble. Yeah. It's just zone control. Dragons are so hard to get to to try and contest. This Dragon is, doesn't want to stay low. Releasing it. And you can see that in like this gaming, they have no... Interest. Interest in that. The fact that Kakao and uh, Rookie are completely across the map securing Rookie's blue buff for themselves. They already knew going in that, hey, we're just going to throw the boomerang. It's going to be a tempted steal, but we're not fighting this 5v5. And they did not. First uh, first Dragon actually picked up there for EDG. So they'll split the first two, one apiece. And again, EDG still ahead about 3,000 gold or so. So it's not a massive lead. They've gotten it, gotten it a little bit more in this game, but... Really slow going in this series in general. I feel like the first 25 minutes of both these games have been very cautious by both teams. And given the level they're playing at, I cannot blame them. I just love that the smallest details are being taken into account here from EDG. It's as simple as giving the Gangplank the three Raptors and not the big one. He'll leave the big one for his jungler. He even gets the small blue Sentinel. Just because they all add towards his Silver Serpents. They add towards his bonus gold that he gets off the Q. Because if you use the Q on a keg, you do still get the bonus gold on everything that is killed. It's the small details. And this is starting to give them this advantage where they will have items before their opponents and they will just run through a team. Oh, Kakao picked off there by Mako. Defting with the damage as well. Kitties blocking off a good portion of Def's damage. Mako did not use the ulti though, so EDG still plenty of weapons. Starting to look uh, at sieging this mid tier tower again. It's going to be fairly difficult with Lulu. She kind of counts as a control mage in terms of her wave clear available with the Blood Lance. Scuttle Crab getting looked at. Well, who was that? Getting looked at. <laughs> we love just going to Spider Form and finish that one off for a bit of extra vision. Yeah, Challenger Crab, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> legitimate juice from the Scuttle Crab. Very That's impressive. some interesting mechanical <laughs> plays tonight. <laughs> And some great ones as well, don't forget. <laughs> mostly great, to be Most, reasonable. Definitely mostly, mostly great, great, but that crab is definitely on the great list. <laughs> yeah. He's climbing the ranks, he's getting better. Approaching rank one, Def going to get this red buff. And again, just gaining strength now for EDG. Don't want to do too much that's scary, pretty confident in their scaling. Well, they don't need to, in all honesty, because they've even got the double teleport. If worse comes yep. to worse, they can 1-3-1. One, one. They've got a Kog'Maw, a Leona, and a Release. They shouldn't die as that trio. 
Although, because there is only three of them, they don't have, say, the Gragas that you would like to see. Kakao's picked that one up instead. But if they do split push EDG, it doesn't really feel like there's going to be an answer from Invictus Gaming. Do they send Rookie on the Lulu? Whoa! Or do they do Baron? They do Baron, but the teleport's there. They've spotted them out. It's actually Darius that's coming down. Huge two-man grab. Maker going to go in there as well. Deft on the other side. As Giddies gets locked up, oh. he will die to pawn as the keg explodes. And Deft is low, but EDG are the ones now under Baron. Hey, while we're here, guys. Don't know what Invictus Gaming were thinking going for that one. I guess they thought it was clearer vision. Oh my god, Pawn is doing so much work right now. Kakao gonna get trapped up here. He'll die to Pawn. He gets another kill for himself. Death will die as a tie, but the tie has no chance of living. Oh. He does. Repost and flash away. Very nice escape there as Kid is just shoving down mid lane. And this is great from Invictus Gaming. Live as the tie might. He's teleporting. Amazing J. Oh, oh my god. Out. Gets the kill round, dunks him for the maybe kill, but the tie has to get locked up. Rapport actually stuns Mako, but Amazing J does get the kill. Now, Kid, he's in trouble. The keg is good. Huge damage to take the tower. <laughs> Rookie's here as well, pops the wild growth as Clear Love. Now has to run back in. Kid, he's getting very low. The repel is down. Clear Love will get the kill. Rookie, though, trying to cut it out. Misses the glitter lens. Kid, he flashes forward on support. Gonna try and take him out. He's ignited. He'll bleed away. The oranges are good, but it's not good enough. Chaos around erupts around the map, and in the end, what looked like an EDG fight turns in Invictus Gaming's hand. A fantastic posture and play out of Kid and Kitties to take down that mid-tier tower. And it was as simple as the tie just did not die. Gave them enough time to work on that mid-turret, and it all came down to one man's individual performance that snowballed in a, an advantage from a fight that, again, as you said, looked really bad. Fiora's like a zombie, man. You make sure you put that second shot straight in the head. Because if she does not die... Double tap. That's exactly what happens to Tai. We saw it when he last played Fiora. Huge amounts of lifesteal and tankiness in that build. And the ult is already enough there for Fiora. So, going to get trickier. Certainly playing against the champion as EDG. Go from a one pick to an almost Baron to a very chaotic trade back and forth. And honestly, look back now, 25 minutes in. Feels like we've just gotten a bit of extra gold, but other than that, still around the same place. I'm sure Chaos is about to erupt in a, another one minute time frame. Dragon about to spawn. I feel like we've kind of cooled off on the Baron. But now, <laughs> certainly both teams do like to do the Baron. That's the one thing you can always count on for Invictus Gaming. They will always fight for Baron. It's the LPL special. Well, EDG very similar in that respect. They'll always just do the Baron, so Invictus Gaming. Always going to be there too, fight. of course, she was on the other foot in this particular situation. Invictus Gaming almost, they thought they were free of vision when they went for that, but it... I just don't think they respected the catch potential from Darius and Gangplank. Now, Pawn did have a great placement of his ultimate. He placed it so it was still, because it's so large, he placed it so it still tapped a bit of the river. But more importantly, when Invictus Gaming were herded to flash over the wall, they were still eating a lot of that slow and damage. Well, TEDG have started to get stronger after that exchange as well. Let's have a quick look at the items. Moving into our next dragon fight. Essence Reaver Hydra there for Zatai. Death Cap Morale and Omicron blasting one for Rookie. Static Shiv IE there for Kid. And quickly on the other side, Trinity Force Blade, IE Trinity Force Avarice Blade. And a couple of tank items there for EDG, including the Black Cleaver. Dragon is going to be started. All I hear is damage, damage, and That's more damage. That's pretty much what's going on. EDG, they're forcing this one. They feel like they're in a position of power and depth has finally arrived. So this should be theirs. But will oh fight. my goodness, the damage. Huge keg there from Pawn. Zones them away. The rumble comparisons keep coming. Didn't even need the ulti for that one as EDG get dragon number two. It's not even just the keg, so to be perfectly honest with you. If IG commit to anything, Gangplank just drops the ultimate. And again, the control that he has around objectives, the dragon, they had not only the terrain advantage on that side of the map, they have the control of the dragon pit. And if you can get near that pit, you're already taking Gangplank checks. And Invictus Gaming, they poked their head around and immediately regretted their decision. But their composition needs to just pull the trigger and look for the engage. Oh, like going that. in instead. But it's actually amazing. Jay that dives in. Mako finds the ulti. Tower will die. Kakao getting low. The wild growth will be part. They're going to dive in. Amazing Jay takes out the Braum. And now the ties on the back lines with a heal for death. It's amazing. Jay's got a double death. Will barely live as Fiora try for the kill. Pong gets the last one. Amazing Jay will die. And it's a 3 1 trade. That was. Very unusual. Invictus Gaming, they engage, but the damage that Pawn is doing 
is a big determining factor. Amazing Jay is 5 and 1 right now. He doesn't look like dying anytime soon. Oh my god! Rookie. That was so sick! Rookie Goodbye, Dev. Goes big. That was awesome. Rookie is so good at Lulu. I don't know if you've been watching this, but this guy is bending it like Beckham yep. with these glitter lances <laughs> off of uh, the backs of creeps. 3 0 1 there on. Look, he's Lulu right now. Certainly not far off. A strong player on almost any champion he touches. This guy that, is so good. That was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, he's keeping his team in the game. He yeah. got the kill on Amazing J. He just did it again. Absolutely. But again, Invictus Gaming, they just need to pull the trigger. Now, that team fight could have gone better for them. The issue is that Zatai wasn't in, to, in the team fight from the very start. He actually had to flash over a wall to try to get into the back line. Excuse me, didn't flash, just walked over, queued to get into the back line. But again, you're empowering the Fiora. You have the wild growth, you have the whimsy, you have the on the hunt. You need to get that guy in there. You can't just keep playing around Pawn's cooldowns of these barrels. Yeah. Let's see Pawn just clearing out the waves. Level 16, ulti back up now. That's all EDG. Gonna go back to their favorite place on the rift. It's right outside that Baron pit. Ah, got the crab that time. Locked yeah. him up with the Kitties? CC. Nailed no, it. he didn't get it. Oh. Kitty's got it. I don't know. Yeah, Kitty's got it with the oh, Q. That's what I thought. Yeah. Nice. Well, good good nice. snap there from Leona. That's amazing. It's Jay, still strong. <laughs> Lulu only getting stronger. And in general, we're approaching now the three item point. Almost 30 minutes into this game. Two dragons up for EDG, one there for IG, and equal up in Tower's game. I think a lot closer than the gold lead might suggest because both teams are going to enter new points of power. So you mentioned nearing the three item stage, where well, we are for the mid laners, and that's the most important part here because it feels like whichever mid laner goes off in the next fight actually almost determines who wins the entire fight because I... Rookie's putting in overtime, but this gangplank is scary. Yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to touch on is that I think it's much easier for Pirate Pawn there than it is for, for Rookie. Not that Rookie's not playing fantastically on this Lulu, but you know Lulu's not going to have the same sort of impact that massive 3-1-4 yeah. and four Gangplank with Infinity Edge, Trinity Force, Ghost Blade is going to have. And we talked about the Gangplank being this power pick for Fawn. Looking pretty good so far. Gangplank's win rate today has been quite good as well. EDG. Again, poking around, getting that vision down. Excesses of wards almost around this area, but they have to make sure they have all of that controlled. We're trying to sweep things out here as well. And again, it's just Baron. Dragon's not up. Towers are kind of hard to breach because you have to walk quite far down the lanes. Double teleport for EDG could create a few more scenarios for them, but as a general rule, you either find a pick or you go for that Baron. Yeah, the Baron, though, They're it's such a risk. They're itching to throw the Solar Flare. Yeah. Mako is posturing in a very aggressive manner. He is either forcing them away from the fight or making them commit immediately because that Solar Flare is a moment's notice away and he wants to do that so badly. Split pushing now in the bottom lane though. Remember, this lead does not last forever for EDG. It's still only now 2,000 gold ahead. Really not a big lead at all at this stage, 31 minutes in. Next Dragon's coming up. That might be the next fight point for these teams. Feels like they're waiting quietly between objectives, but no team's gotten a really clear lead. But like Rusty said, EDG just have more versatility about the options available to them the longer this game goes on because they're running de double teleport. At some point, they can just look to 1v1. That poor blue dog. Got absolutely massacred by Paul, and he's doing a tremendous amount of damage. And EDG, they'll finally they pull go. the trigger. Def does get spotted by a ward. That's crucial. But Pawn's walking back over already, and Clulov's not even in the pit. He's going to walk in now. They've got good damage. Do they have enough? Kids back in base. I think EDG have done it. They should be able to get this. Invictus Gaming are starting to mount up the attempted defense now, but it is long gone. No GP ult to steal it this time. EDG might look for the engage. The, the ult is down. You're going to try and nail Kid as he flashes out. Ult there from Gakao as well, just to make sure. Kitty's copped that Q, by the way. From Pawn. There's a lot of damage. You can see by his flashing health bar. God. Even the poor minions. Yeah, EDG, they just pull the trigger yet again. Very typical EDG fashion. Baron's there for the taking. They do not hesitate whatsoever. And Invictus, you mentioned this earlier, Prosker, and they want to fight for every objective. Well, they couldn't fight for that one. They just dropped the ball on their vision control. Yeah. That seemed like it would have been fairly obvious, especially because, like you said, Deft 
was spotted out by a ward going into the area. So IG just fumbling with their communication, looking indecisive for a change. Yeah, and that's not been something we've said about their player recently. Is EDG going to maybe do the opposite here and get nice and quickly onto this dragon that only just spawned? They're going to take it away here. And EDG with Baron is usually a deadly force. So what else can they get? They got a dragon. They've got themselves a good boost in gold as well. But how much damage can they get done to these towers? That's usually the EDD trademark. When they get Baron, they almost always break a base. I feel like at this point, they should actually just split up 1-3-1, one, one, apply yeah. the Baron buff in every single lane, and just start looking to Siege. Because right now, Invictus Gaming is just ripping them around the map and pretty much eating up the timer on their Baron by shoving in these waves, moving it underneath them, and then pushing another wave. And this is what Zatai has been trying to do, is pull back Amazing J, pull back the Darius pressure, but. They haven't considered that Pawn can sit with that teleport in a side lane. And these three members here, they can take down anything. Yeah, I actually like what Pawn's doing. He's sort of going bottom lane, putting a keg down and just pushing it immediately. Can do so much damage. And now moving back with his team, going to join up for another 5v5. Kegs are down! Good spell shield there from Kid, but this tower getting shredded. He got it that time. Oh my god, Kakao, okay. it's huge damage! Ult land there as well for Mako. The ult tower for Kakao to move them away. Mako gonna get crushed under that tower. Gets bounced all the way back. As GP ult down. Clearlove's taking good damage. As Amazing J, he's taking out Kakao. Darius does pick up the double kill. And Mako is the only casualty. Amazing J gonna find Kid. He puts the dunk on, but he's gonna get himself picked off by the Simmer. An incredible counter engage from Kakao. In the end, Invictus Gaming are able to chase EDG off the front of their lawn, but entirely on the back of a wild growth and gorgeous cast. Miko still has that ulti, but doesn't use it. Def will have to back off the area as well. And that was a good opportunity for EDG, but IG, like you said, played that well. Played that perfectly. They did play that extremely well, and a lot of that came down to just not dying quickly enough. This Sivir's sustain is immense, and then Lulu not gonna let anything happen to him. In saying that, I was watching Pawn very closely in that fight to see if he would hit anybody. He was only using kegs. He did not auto attack once, and if he wasn't auto attacking, he was either locked down or looking for a keg, and both kegs missed. It's not what you want. We no. saw Kick Out take, what, 1200 damage? That was the one From that hit. Gangplank, which is quite a lot onto your very tanky jungler. So Pawn certainly needs to make sure he's in the right spots in these fights, making the differences. I don't know what that item is from Pawn. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, BF Sword, that's nice. No, because I was like, and oh yeah, like, Infinity Edge? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> the classic double Infinity Edge. Don't joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually happen. <laughs> Pawn's crazy, man. I've seen him do some stuff. He's going to go back down bottom lane, clear out these waves. I think he's noticed that he has an Infinity Edge already. We'll find out very <laughs> soon. From Given Skirin. how quickly those 12 <laughs> minions died, I really hope he does. Because so he's doing crazy damage. At this point in the game, Pawn is still big, but like the rest of this side of Invictus Gaming, they can still win team fights based off their comp. If Zatai gets that reset on his ultimate and can actually heal everybody in that area, then they can reset the fight immediately. Lulu already does that. Braum very good at disengaging, so is Gragas. So you look at this Invictus Gaming team comp, it comes down to if they make a single kill. They're coming for Pawn now as well. Zatai, good riposte. But Kakao's down now as well. Pawn's gonna have to run out. The teleport's down. Ulti used there as well. Huge ult though coming out. Wow. Zatai explodes him as Amazing J completes that port. The rest of EDG are coming. And they're gonna have to try and get a kill here. Zatai gonna be the target. They need to kill him very soon. But Rookie will come in and save the day, and EDG have to back off. They're almost stuck now. Kitties is very fast. Ulti's out. It will just miss death. But Kitties is still running. Good cocoon from Clear Love. Again, EDG are almost punished by an overcommit and an individual misstep from one of their players. That could have been disaster. Yeah, pawn out of position, and they should have just sacrificed that he was going to go down and push somewhere else or controlled some other area of vision. But they go into a choke area and almost pay for their trouble. Very well done, though, from Quillard to get himself to safety. But again, this Invictus Gaming side, all it takes is that one kill from a Fiora ultimate. And honestly, the entire the entirety of the damage that came out of Pawn was reset to zero. Luckily, that was an isolated kill. So Fiora, not too much of a threat. EDG successfully disengaged, but a very tense and scary moment there for EDG. You know they have some lead here, but probably have an idea that it's not that big. I mean, Deft is getting stronger, but he's gone defensive items now. Pawn is hogging so much of this gold. He just hasn't done the damage yet. EDG really only need one fight. 
and they might be able to line it up around the next major. Both Baron and Dragon are spawning in a minute 15. But the EDG just haven't quite found their footing, it feels like, in this game. I mean, Darius isn't even going to get any stronger from here. He's at level 16 mark, so he has the reset on his ultimate every single time it kills somebody. He couldn't ask for a better position to be in for the rest of these fights. But at this stage, it just seems like the Fiora is coming up trumps. And Zatai, I agree, very scary. Essence Reva, Randu, and Hydra all done. Weird pseudo tank relationship between Lulu and Fiora. The fact that if Fiora is able to proc the healing area of effect on her ultimate. Everyone's a tank. Yeah, on top of the, uh, the shield and the wild growth that Lulu can. Yeah. But that's it's like that's the beauty of the comp that they're running. Yeah, right it's right? really interesting. Yeah, because there's no direct tank besides the Hatsuka Cow. Kitties is a tank to a degree, but he's the support, so a low economy tank. But again, if Lulu ults someone, they become a tank. If Fiora ults double someone, the they become a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I just want to oh. point out that he actually moved one closer to his others. No, no, so that's the spectator client. It's of cost. Don't worry. I wish he did that. <laughs> his guns are not that synergetic. He's got one free chance. He does. And then he's got a sword. And he's got a gun. Well, real gang. Dragon up now. EDG look for their fourth. to be a key dragon to get. Good force fights constantly around it. Double Infinity at 4 might have the damage here. Certainly well, gonna do something. Got the damage. But Kakao gonna move <laughs> in. The dragon's big! Clear love steals. The kid is in trouble as the ulti comes out. Gangplank's gonna cut them off. Pawn, he'll get the first kill. Mako gonna fight Kakao. That'll be the second as Kid completely trapped. Has to flash out as a tie. Charging in. Huge damage. Wild growth is there. They need to kill him. He goes in. Gets the reset. No pawn. Does get the kill. Watch now kid. amazing Jay charging in as Kid. Doing good damage, but Dev still fighting in. IG can't quite do it. EDG, bleeding red, get four kills and a dragon. So much of that fight right there came down to Pawn's Gangplank ultimate that just zoned away Rookie. He could not get back into the fight. Zatai had to be really particular in his use of when he can go in. And it was too little too late. Rookie, Rookie does it again. Yet again. Big snipe there as EDG gonna look for that Baron, but Rookie does so much damage. Rookie doesn't even need a team. He just needs a cannon creep. Well, yeah. just, they're doing the Baron right now. Oh and my there's God. two members low. Are you ready? The scuttle crap Go, Rookie! Oh, nice. Go, Rookie! He does so much damage. The Baron's down! Clear Love does get it. But Rookie is looking in. Pawn wants blood. Rookie's low on mana. I think he's going to have to back. He won't get Clear Love. And EDG will just barely disengage. Had to wait for that last little fence. Did. But that was really close. At EDG, they capitalize on one fight. They pull a snake. Almost, they get that Baron on top of it, and it couldn't have been more tense for them, but they do get out with their lives. Rookie is trying so hard. Moral of the story, double Infinity <laughs> Edge. <laughs> TLDR. <laughs> double IE. Double IE. Gangplank came up huge. We know, we know what the core of that was. There was all that crit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that bonus damage. Like, I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm doing really quick, like, You're math. doing math. He doesn't right. even have, like, 100% crit. <laughs> like, he only has 60, right? Phantom Dead, so come on. <laughs> this time. <laughs> Got a chain vest, thankfully, so it won't be the third that IE. That was in like, look, 100% look, crit. I, I guess if you want AD and crit specifically, yeah, the yeah. only item you can buy is IE. And so I get that part of it. Are like, we really trying to rationalize yeah, it? Yeah, but even you don't need a last whisper either because the kegs yeah, ignore resistances. Yeah. So that's another bit of damage with a bit of extra So just crit. build the flat AD, the flat crit, well, I mean, and just take okay, people. But you get extra crit. Okay. Well, EDG now going to push down bottom side. I just want it to be good. <laughs> I want to believe in Pawn. I certainly his do. His shield right now. I don't think yeah. he's going to die. That's a third of his health bar. As yeah. Zatai actually gets a tower in the top lane. Oh, IG God. able to fight back That's pretty shield. easily. Jugger Sivir. <laughs> it's Jugger yeah. Fiora. It's don't even joke. It's that Sivir cosplayer that we saw earlier. Leading the charge. Looking good. Looking EDG. great. Gonna pop the way down. Mako pops the ulti. It's Kakao they found. Teleport's oh, down as comes. well. Cakes are good. The damage is there. Amazing J! Oh. Doesn't quite get the grab. And Zatai is still top lane. EDG have to press hard. Zatai's got the teleport available. Yeah, Born that's massive. and Amazing J do not. So the use of that teleport was... 
kind of for nothing right there from Amazing J. And now they do need to respond to this member pushing in that top lane. If they don't, they lose turrets. And Invictus Gaming, they buy a lot more time with that Baron. Amazing J accidentally cancelled his back, but he'll complete it now. Baron up, powered up recalls, will do wonders, but Zatai's bought time for his team. Baron buff is close to out now for EDG, and then he got nothing off it, I believe. Yeah. Did they get a single tower? Invictus Gaming, I, Rusty highlighted it. The fact that both those teleport cooldowns were burned for nothing. E, or IG just ate up so much of EDG's Baron time. Yeah. And Dead Man's played Fiora. They're checking with Zatai's build. No massive offensive items. Got the Renu and Zoman. Very good against this team of EDG. Essence Reaver, Hydra. That seems to be the core for him. And then actually the adaptation is uh, Dead Man's Plate, not the Spirit Visage this time. Yeah, so the armor. Well, when you have a, you know, 20 million HP shield coming out of Lulu. And a double Infinity Edge indicates you want armor more so than magic resistance. Certainly do. <laughs> it all makes sense. Well, it's coming together now. This is a very heavy AD comp from EDG. Yeah. But they've got plenty of damage. It's got to put it in the right places. Deft actually getting quite strong at this point. He's got Three and a half offensive items and a Banshee's. I think he's looking for an Infinity Edge as his last item, but he chose to pick up the Pickaxe first, which I just shake my head because you have a single slot left. You should put the... It's the back timing. Yeah, like, again, it's like just... He's, he's a long way away from actually finishing an item because he did go for the Pickaxe. But you're denying yourself a lot of flat damage in that item slot. Yeah. Well, minute up till Dragon, see if it costs him. Dragon 5, by the way, for Edward Gaming. If they fight for this one, Invictus Gaming is standing on a ward. They just don't know it. Yep. And then Even though they have an oracle. Death Cult reveals them. As they do have Guardian Angel actually finished up for Pawn as well. He is full build. This is apparently the Pawn Gang flank. And he is he's basically, in a, which is hilarious to me, basically an assassin champion. He's Pirate Pawn, okay? This is, we've already decided this is his name. Well, Ziverolt's getting popped. Who have they caught? It's Clearla, but he repels out very slick. Gangplank ult was used as well. That's really important. Rookie. Oh my god, Rookie. Through the shield is a tie. Maybe caught out. The ulti is actually there. Lulu. Damage is good. Repost is there as well. Lulu comes out. The wild growth is popped there. The damage is still good. It's Amazing J gets the first dunk. Fiora is dead. Kids get a die there as well. Port and Amazing J just do too much damage. They got kitties now. Make it with a good tap as Pong gets the double. And Rookie can't save them this time. EDG once again. They only get three members, but that does not matter because they have got control of the dragon. It is dragon number five, and nobody is dead from Edward Gaming. Rookie, one more time. He's going to try and be the hero with his partner in crime, Kakao. The KT arrows, will they live to fight another day? I think Death has seen it. No, Kakao's going all the way around. Rookie trying to find the loot and just doesn't quite get it on the clear, love. Kakao's here. He certainly Dragon. is. He's ready for the smite still. Rookie's going to charge oh! in. Dev takes him out. Kakao now in as well. They'll keep going. They'll get the ace. EDG will get everything in that fight. Rookie just got dunked by Pawn. That damage was absurd. He just evaporated. Like He no longer exists. That is disgusting. That's my facial expression right now. <laughs> and that's Rookie. He's not looking too happy. Pawn's going to teleport back in. EDG with five dragons. Going to face tank themselves up this turret and absolutely melt it. In a 46 minute slug fest, I think EDG finally got their foot in the door. That said, I mean, we've got 82k gold to 72. Yes, that's a 10k disparity, but at this point in the game, everyone's full item build. It doesn't matter. This could still technically come down to a single fight. What we saw in the last game, the IG were the ones that had the gangplank. Maybe that's the secret. The GP. The, the key difference is the base is broken a lot more severely this time. So actually coming back from that one big fight, a lot more difficult to do when lanes are pressured. You're against a double teleport comp as well. Oh, yeah. EDG are totally still in the driver's seat right like here, like is, running them over. But <laughs> There is very limited ways for Invictus Gaming, if at all, to actually come back into this game. IG are like on the hood, yeah. but they've got a hand on top of the car. They're, they're, they're still holding on to like a windshield wiper, okay? Yeah, that's all they've got left, that windshield wiper or a breaking <laughs> rear view mirror. Exactly. This car's starting to speed up as well. EDG <laughs> trying to close this game out. Dr Baron is up, sorry. Pretty much right now. Is EDG going to set themselves up for it? This damage is going to be absurd. Watch this Paul Baron's health just Watch go down. Watch the Gangplank keg crit. Oh, they found someone. It's Kitties. They'll dive in. Wild Growth is used, but it's not enough. Death 
is going to get that first kill. Kakao's caught up now as well. This damage is absolutely absurd. There is just nothing that Invictus Gaming to, can do to this right now. They have to kind of let it happen, but they're poking their heads around, playing with fate. Well, five dragons, five... Not five barons, just one baron. Now for EDG, have all the power they could ever need in this game. It was ID's game to lose in game one, and they just managed to close things out. EDG, <laughs> you're in the same position now. What do you do in this game? Because you have everything you need to finish it. They've caught the tie. He's going to run away. Rookie is real good at getting people out to safety. Rookie. I mean, Kill win or lose push. here, Rookie has had the game of his life. One of them, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> This pawn's going to come in to collect these groups. Doesn't really need the money, but he's got not a bad amount of wave clear. What? He needs more. He he's could got sell his ghost blade for something. Yeah. Reasonable. That's true. He's got 475 CS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> so close. So close. So that's 80% crit, if my math <laughs> is correct. So he's getting closer. Might sell the boots next. Why would you go for the double eye edge before you went for the Phantom Dancer? I don't you know, why wouldn't you go like Phantom Dancer fin or, fan or Infinity Edge, Phantom like, Dancer, Infinity Edge? Well, I'm not a world champion for Oscar, and I don't know. <laughs> These are not questions I have <laughs> answers to. But if EDG win, it might not matter. Amazing J working on this tower. Gonna do good damage. He's still got the Dragon buff ticking away, I believe. No, dropped off now for EDG. I'll just poke away. This tier 2 is not defensible. And IG know it, they'll back away. They need to try and consolidate anything that they can at this stage. It's going to be a last-ditch effort from Invictus Gaming. If they want to defend this inhibitor, it's very difficult to do. They just need to isolate someone with the cast, preferably either Death or Pawn. I almost don't want Pawn in the back line. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where he wants to be. ZDG getting the kegs down. Good pink ball there as well for the Siege. And Pawn's just looking for poke. He's a very weird poke champion, but he can do a decent amount, as you can see right there. And the damage is still in. The ulti's down. They're going to keep moving in. EDD just needs to knock down this tower, and it's gone. Good no control from, uh, from EDG to not pull the trigger and get overzealous on the dive. Focus the objectives. Wow. There's no way. There's just nothing that Invictus Gaming can do. The second one K connects, they're zoned from their own turrets. I feel like must add in Italy to the description of champions game like is like. Because, I mean, it's obviously a lot shorter in range, if but Nidalee you eat one. and Rumble had, like, a baby. That was a pirate. That was a pirate. That's what you get, <laughs> game like. I mean, pirate's a lifestyle choice, really. You're not born a pirate. That's true. So it's reasonable here. Well, Pawn certainly seems like he was. He has <laughs> got so much CS in this game. Dragon up again in a minute if EDG need it, but they're going to push down this last wave in bottom. That pink ward's still there, by the way. I think that would, might be from a, not that long ago for IG. But they do have some vision. Amazing Jay's going to start the push. And EDG just have one more bit of base to knock down. Being a pirate is a lifestyle choice. It certainly is. So is being imp. Imagine if imp plays game plank. Oh I can't. I can't. That's too much. As deft is face tanking the tower hits. He's just going to power through this turret. IG. No many good options left. They approach. They're going to get kegged. Pawn's going to set them down again. This CDR is absurd. I like they're trying to kill them now. They're actually going to go back in. Huge ult there as Kakao might get caught up. But Kitty's now going to get shredded down. The GP ulti doing good damage. He will die as Pawn gets the first kill. Amazing. Jay chasing in. Get the flash. Double grip there as well. Def gets the next one on the Civic. Kakao is dead. Satai is close. He'll die as well. But well, the Repost keeps him alive for a while. And Rookie again. The only one left. But Def will flash for an EDG. They've won game number two. After a 52 minute slugfest. EDG finally closed this one out, but I think the thing that we've realized in back to back games, Gangplank has to be banned. Certainly something to consider here is EDG will smash down the Nexus. Now we're in for a fun one. One game apiece now for these two. GP being instrumental in both wins. And now, after two games, we're pretty much down to a best of three. And if the games are anything like that, and we go to the full distance. We're in for quite a night. Again, this is a best of five. So we've got quite a ways to go. It's with knowledge, though, to be fair. It's a best of three, and they know what has affected them in games one and two. Gangplank, it was mentioned, surely will be dealt with from here on out because that was an overbearing factor. If you can build two infinity edges and win a game, 
You have questions? Pretty big deal. Well, Paul was a big deal that game. With a, he just did so so I'm much damage. I'm just so happy. I've that never seen a tank take 1,200 damage before. I'm just so happy that the rumors were true. They kept saying, you know, <laughs> but Pawn's gangplank is OP, and we're like, okay, let's let's see this gangplank mid. Thank you for delivering. Yeah, <laughs> really did there. And again, double teleport looked good. Darius out for amazing J with yeah. the pressure from clear level was great. Just all the pieces there. And again, back to the junglers. Kakao, a fine game again from him, but clear love much more active this game. Yeah, definitely. I think clear love being proactive was the key difference. Kakao really struggled. I don't think he got a whole lot working and he was focusing on that top lane with his presence around the map. But clear love actually just didn't need to do anything, but he was always present. Yeah, it was looking good there. We're going to get a bit more on that long game. That was certainly an epic one. So let's pop out to the war room for some analysis. Thank you so much.